I don't want to have anything in America and in Great Britain, Canada and Australia. Hello everyone, today our guest is Mark Faber, who is a Swiss investor based in Thailand. He is the publisher of the Gloom Boom and Doom Report newsletter and director of Mark Faber Laid, which acts as an investment advisor and fund manager. I could come to you and argue, Japan is now the perfect example of a complete failure of fiscal and monetary policy to lift GDP growth and to improve economic conditions. I mean, because the Keynesian will always tell you, fiscal spending will boost economic activity, money printing will uh, lift economic activity. And every crisis we had in the last hundred years or so, after the acceptance by American economists of Keynesian theories as the main uh, theory in economics, and which essentially entails interventionism. I'm against yes. any intervention, but this is the philosophy behind uh, Keynesian is the interventions by the government because the market doesn't function well enough. Well, the yeah. market doesn't function always w very well, but it functions better some then some idiots like this Hancock you were just referring to and this bear book in Germany and Aether and in New Zealand and all these clowns, you understand? The market is formed or the price is formed by people that are reasonably well informed about what they buy and what they sell. And it's a vote, it's a democratic process, in other words, yeah. Uh, a buyer stock, the buyers buy and they pay the price and the sellers sell because so, so and so. So in a way, the interventions are already an infringement into a democratic process. Great moral story of people when they're under fear, they don't speak out anymore. Yeah. And I have noticed this with many of my friends in the U.S., they're not giving their opinions anymore because they're afraid that the IRS will walk into their doors the next day. Or uh, a friend of mine, he lives in Thailand and he finances, uh, I mean, he's a donor to the AFD. The AFD in Germany has nothing to do with na Nazis and so forth. And, uh, but he's a, in the view of the communist, socialist, green, and so forth, the AFD is far right when it is yeah. in the center. Yeah. Now, he is a donor there. Now, he met the ambassador in, uh, the new ambassador of Germany in Bangkok. He said to him, look, I invite you for dinner to my house because he has a very nice, luxurious staff and, uh, you know, he lives in style because he's very wealthy. So the ambassador first said, yes, I mean, but then he canceled on short notice because he was afraid to be seen with uh, someone who is a donor to the AFT. This is mm. fear of people to expose themselves. And when you ask, you know, what should we do? We have to fight and we have to point out that the government leaders we have nowadays are a complete disaster. They've been put in place by someone. I don't know who they are, the people that put in place this government official. But they're all puppets, including Trump was a puppet. All of them. Yeah. Yes. And uh, that has to be pointed out that our responsibility is to fight against these people. My sense is that when the wealthy people in Europe and the U.S. will lose half their money, then they'll get the shock and they'll get incentivized to do something. You understand? As long as the portfolio only goes down 10, 20 percent, they have so much money, they don't care, really. I mean, they care. I know how rich people think because I've dealt with all my life and that was all reasonably wealthy. 
But uh, until someone really moves, it has to hurt. No, it's like I'm a smoker. Until I really get sick, I will continue to smoke. No, I drink a lot. Until I really get sick, I continue drinking. Yeah. Yeah. No, they need real pain. But I want to get now go go to the hundred thousand dollar portfolio. As I wrote, I think we are in a situation where, first of all, we have to think how to invest. And uh, is the investment to make a lot of money or is the investment to preserve what we have? So at my age, <laughs> I'm more keener to preserve what I have than to make a lot. Because at 77 years of age, uh, if you haven't made any money yet, it is unlikely that you will make a lot in the last uh, 10% of your life. And I'm not that optimistic. I think I'm in the last 5%. But uh, then the preservation of capital becomes important. And if you're young, you have to say to yourself, how did wealthy people in America and Europe become rich? Usually through land ownership, because they didn't do anything more stupid with the money. It mm. kept them into something. It kept them away from day trade. Let's put it this way. And you <laughs> pointed out the system is rigged. Do you think that the stock market is a mechanism to take it away from the rich people, from the politicians, and hand it over to the poor people? It's a complete fake. It is designed to collect the money from poor people and channel it legally and illegally. The, of course, the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, is an institution formed by idealists to protect individual investors. That was maybe the ideology, but it's changed to protect the wealthy people. For instance, uh, the Robin Hood platform and Schwab and so forth, they sell the order flow to hedge funds. I mean, yeah. I think no clear example of a, a rigged market if you sell the order flow to someone else. In the 70s and 60s, and I mean, since the beginning of the stock market, we had the specialist system. The specialists were always attacked because they saw the order flow. They had to yeah. buy limits and sell limits by the, uh, by the, speculators and investors. So people always said, oh, the specialist is a money-making machine because they know the order flow. Uh, the point is, where do I keep the custody of my assets? And I suggest some diversification. I don't well, want to have anything in America and in Great Britain, Canada, and Australia. These are, for me, the vulnerable countries. Uh, because they're all one and the same. Yeah. But uh, if I were an American, I would say I have at least half my money outside the U.S. in other jurisdictions. It's, uh, if you buy in America and you have a Merrill Lynch account or whatever account, and you buy stocks in Hong Kong, but the, the custody is still in uh, America, is no use. You would have to open an account in Asia and buy these shares out of Asia, then uh, the custody is under a different sovereign nation. I mean, I don't want to give advice here, but I, I suppose that Singapore would be a reasonable place to hold some assets. Yes, oh, I agree. To the asset allocation. I mean, I'm not as smart as the hedge fund managers all are, uh, but I would suggest, of course, to hold some precious metals. I'm not a wild bull on precious metals, but I think it's a safe investment to hold in the long run. I'm not buying in the morning and selling in the afternoon. And, uh, you know, I'm a bit surprised by the weakness in precious metals because I think they should be higher than they are at the present time. But I can live with that. Uh, the side, but 
the disadvantage of precious metals is they don't provide you with a cash flow. And I'm a cash flow person. Yeah. So I like, uh, I like bonds, but not necessarily treasuries. Uh, it depends. Uh, if I look back at the treasury market in the 70s, okay? We sh I'm talking here about, say, the 10 years treasury. It started at 6% in 1970, then it rose sharply uh, in yields, and then it fell by about 50% in yields. And then it rose again into 1979, then it fell again, and then it rose in the peak in 1981. What I want to say, interest rates never go straight up, and they never go straight down. There was big swings, and these interest rate swings, they last, I mean, normally around 25, 30 years, but the last one, because there was manipulation by the central banks, the downdraft in uh, inflation and in interest rates uh, began in 1981, and it uh, ended essentially in May 2020, when the 10 years uh, reached an artificial low of 0.57%, courtesy of the manipulation by central banks in the case of the US, the Federal Reserve. I mean, if an individual would manipulate the market as badly as the Fed and other central banks, it would be in jail. Yeah. yeah. This is the institutionalization of crime. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Mark Faber. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.